Welcome, friends, to a project that I hope I never have to do ever again, where I take this old tea cart and try my hand at restoring it. Or something. Let's dive right in. I picked up this tea cart in the spring of 2023 at a second time around type thrift store that sells primarily furniture and things you would find in a dumpster on a construction site. It feels like thrift stores used to be a place where you could go hunt for a good deal, and now all they are are just a hot spot for buying used items for the same price as you could get them new. Speaking of new, this is my new 6 inch random orbital sander, and great heavens this thing is splendid. It made quick work of removing the old finish on this cart and revealing the cherry underneath. Now, I was also using name brand sandpaper, but still, this thing is so much quicker and faster than a 5 inch sander. And I'm a little bit annoyed that I didn't have this thing when I was building three large slab tables last year. The cart had these little extension wings, so when I discovered them, I decided it was the perfect time to move everything around and then lean the cart over so that the drawer slammed on the ground. Oh, somebody! With that out of the way, I could cut to me with the cart up on my workbench, where I could turn my attention to the freshly damaged drawer. The back of the drawer was falling off, so I pried out the nails that were holding it in place with this mini hammer, and then did my best to reattach it with way more wood glue than was actually necessary. Now this project was something I did when I was really bored or didn't have much else to do, so it took several months to complete. If you are an observant watcher, then you will have already noticed that my hair has changed drastically since the start of the video, and it will continue to do so. This long expanse of time meant that plenty of other things in my shop were changing as well. I upgraded some tools, I got some new tools, and I tried out a handful of collar mics for talking directly to the camera. The first one, which you are about to see me use, had a unique feature which made it sound like I was underwater the whole time. Really cool stuff! Now that the wings are detached, we can use a detail sander to attack this edge that I could never access before. I've never used one of these before, so hopefully it doesn't sporadically cut off all my limbs. This detail sander is probably older than I am, but it actually worked quite well at removing the old finish from this curved surface. Alright, so I couldn't quite get all the way into this crevasse here. So I'm going to just use this scrape of wood here and this piece of sandpaper and try to get right up into that crevasse. One great thing that has come out of filming myself making things is I make better decisions in regard to health and safety. There's no way I would have worn a mask if I knew that no one was ever going to see this. But because this video will get 14 views on YouTube, a mask is a must. And it's a little bit silly that I would use it for hand sanding, but for things like the orbital sander that stir up much more dust, it is very important to protect your lungs. Like I've always said, protected lungs lead to a better way to breathe using your lungs for longer as you get older and still have good lungs with which to breathe with. All right, so I have been sanding this leg and this stretcher for almost an hour now, and it's just going really, really slowly because of how intricate this leg is. And I kind of came to the realization that this isn't going to work how I expected it to work. I was hoping to have it all sanded in about four hours, and that's just not going to happen with how intricate these wheels are and how I have four of these legs that I've already spent an hour on for half of. So, I need to kind of take a step back and think of kind of a plan B. And this goes against all my woodworking morals, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it. I'm going to keep the natural cherry top, I'm going to keep the drawer face, and I might keep this shelf here all natural. But Everything else is so intricate that it's just going to take me 10 or 15 hours to sand, and that really just doesn't make sense. It's just not worth my time to spend 20 hours sanding it. So, I'm going to get white paint, paint the legs and the wheels for sure, and then I'll kind of just evaluate it and see how it looks, and then decide what I'm going to paint and what I'm going to just finish with polyurethane. paint. This bottom drawer is a little bit loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue some supports up underneath it to make it a little bit more sturdy than it is now. Whoa. In this clip, the birds of spring do sing. On life's back burner, this project did cling. As I voice over on December 4th, you see, time's melody echoes a perplexing decree. 
I just used some scraps of half inch ply to glue to the bottom of the shelf to make it more sturdy and then I clamped them in place. I've already rambled about how videotaping is good for health and safety, but it's also great for capturing moments where I just make a big fool of myself. This usually happens several times per video, but I tend not to include these clips, not out of shame, but rather because they are so silly that some people would undoubtedly think that they were staged. Somebody. <laughs> This shelf is now stronger than most of my relationships, so let's sand it down and see how it looks. Mm. Something that is almost universal among woodworkers is a general disliking for sanding. But what's interesting is that if someone took a look around my shop, they would think that I am some sort of sanding fanatic. I've spent large piles of cash on sanders, and I currently have 10 different types of sanders kicking around in my shop. Somehow, despite it being the most unpleasant experience of all, I still pour my money and time into it. The time has come to sand down the two extension wings. Let us go. One thing about sanding down old finishes and stains is you always have to stand up to your fears and face what lies beneath. So I have it sanded down, and one thing you'll notice is that this piece is a lot lighter than this piece. You may or may not know that cherry darkens with time as it's exposed to light, and particularly UV rays. So my guess is that this part sat for a long time with this side up against the wall, so it was not exposed to as much light and not as many UV rays. Just a goofy side note, let us continue with the various things. I used this mini shovel to remove the remnants of the pricing sticker, forever vanquishing that agonizing reminder that I had spent $65 on a silly broken tea cart. Then I used the old wood glue and sanding dust trick to fill in this gap here, and then it was time to spray finish. Now looking back at this video half a year later, I see so many things I did wrong with the finishing process. I think this was my second time ever spraying finish, and despite my reckless lack of technique and total disregard for overspray, the finish actually came out looking pretty nice. This was an air sprayer that I got for around $45 on sale at Harbor Freight, and it worked really well. At the time, I didn't have an air compressor, so this was a really nice budget way to get a good sprayed finish. I have since purchased a very large air compressor, so now I have a more standard method of spraying finish, but really, this inexpensive all-in-one sprayer is a great option if you don't have air compressing capabilities. One lesson that I learned from this spraying experience was to not spray outdoors at night in the summertime. The lights that I had set up so that I could see turned into a giant bug magnet, and those bugs ended up sacrificing themselves on the freshly finished tabletop. So actually the footage you are seeing here is my second attempt at a final coat. And this time I did the quickest and fastest application of finish, and then immediately moved the cart inside to let the finish cure. And then it was time for painting. Meh. Nobody really likes painting, so I'll probably just speed this footage way up and then I'll uh, maybe enjoy this poem about painting. Brush in hand, my moods askew. Angry strokes on a tea cart brew. No doors to hide frustration's fume. White paint rebellion, a reluctant tune. Tea cart witnesses my discontent. Each stroke a protest, a wild lament. Angry art, a reluctant start, a painted tale from an unwilling heart. I somehow made it through the entirety of this project and then remembered there's a drawer. To deal with this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this drive screw and remove the drawer pool, and then we'll go from there. This was kind of an annoying discovery when I remembered that I still had to fix up uh, and finish the drawer because I thought I was coming to the very end of this project and then I was actually getting ready to take pictures of it to sell it and I remembered that the drawer was out of order. Here's another not particularly drastic example of how cherry darkens with time and how it's exposed to light, UV rays. You can see where the handle covered the wood. 
is a little bit lighter than where the handle was not. Turns out the bottom of the drawer is made of this dodgy MDF, so I'm just gonna smear it with paint. This was kind of just a silly blunder that led to more time spent painting. The bottom of the drawer was a little bit dirty, so rather than just cleaning it off with a rag, I attacked it with my sander. Quickly sanded through the veneer that made up the bottom of the drawer, revealing the MDF underneath. I felt like a little bit of a fool because I had caused the whole problem, but decided the easiest way to provide a slight fix to the problem would just be to cover the whole thing with paint. Painting the inside of the handle like you see me doing now was probably the most satisfying and enjoyable part of this whole process, which just shows you know how much fun I was having uh, with this tea cart restoration. The drawer front is finished and the bottom of it is painted, so it's time to reattach the hinges with this drive screw. So this is basically done. All I need to do now is put in the drawer, attach the wings, and then rip off all this tape that keeps me imprisoned, and then it's time to try to sell this thing. Let's go. I don't really have much else to say for this portion of the video, so I would just like to thank you, the viewer, for making it past the 10 minute mark. I hope this video has been entertaining or perhaps even educational, and as always, if you have ideas on what I could do better or how I could make these videos more enjoyable to watch, please leave me a comment. I'm at the point now where I get two or three new comments a day on old videos, and it's really fun to get feedback from people. So it's been 110 days since I first listed the tea cart on Craigslist. And about halfway through that time, so about 50 days ago, I also listed it on Facebook Marketplace. And after dodging numerous scams, I think I finally found someone that might actually buy it. So let's go pack up the car and see if this fellow will give me $100 for a tea cart that I spent $60 on and put plenty of hours, whoa, plenty of hours of work into. Let's go. This feels like a morally curt video because I'm like restoring or building something and then selling it and talking to a camera the whole time while driving in a small car, different places. So I thought why not like fully embrace it and do a time lapse of me driving to this place with some very strange music because he does that a lot. So let's do it. Oh, that was also like. successful. The man purchased it at full price and was quite pleased. Hooray! Let's do a quick rundown of how much money I made off of this project. 
I purchased the tea cart for the price of 65 US dollars and then sold it a little bit over half a year later for 100 US dollars, giving me a profit of $35. Now, I didn't track how much time I put into this project, but it was well over 10 hours, but just for the sake of the mathematics, we're gonna say 10 hours, which gives me an hourly rate of three and a half dollars an hour, which is less than half of the current federal minimum wage in the United States. This project was definitely not very profitable in the way of finances. I think my biggest takeaway from this is for me personally to steer clear of any furniture restorations in the future, because I do not enjoy them. Thanks for watching, Exit Rat Kind.